Let's go now to CBS News Chief Washington Correspondent Major Garrett joining us from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the site of the Republican National Convention. Major, it's good to have you. This was already going to be a historic convention with a former president set to secure the nomination again. How do you expect this will hang over the event? In every way, shape, and form, this event, this assassination attempt on the presumptive Republican nominee, who, as you indicated, will make history by being the first Republican in the entire history of the Republican Party to be nominated three consecutive presidential cycles. That's what Donald Trump is going to be come later this week here in Milwaukee. That was already historic, of course. He's a Republican nominee of a party that saw an effort to overturn the 2020 election. That's historic. He's under multiple indictments, a convicted felon. That is historic. And you can't separate those things from the assassination attempt in Butler, Pennsylvania yesterday. Everything around the Trump movement has been fraught with not only energy and devotion and love of the former president, but intense criticism of his approach to politics, his own rhetoric about Democrats wanting to destroy the country and being riddled with fascists and Marxists. All of that existed and was part of the history and the tension before this event in Butler, Pennsylvania yesterday. All of that will be magnified here in Milwaukee. It will create an atmosphere, if it was even possible, of more tension, of more anxiety about other possible acts, either of protest or violence. There will be additional security applied to the convention site and everything around it. We're beginning to see that this morning here in downtown Milwaukee. So all of the events leading up to yesterday in Butler, Pennsylvania, now magnified, now enlarged, and those who are trying to bring off this Republican National Convention here in Milwaukee even more anxious than they were 24 hours ago. I want to ask you about that because we had a, an eyewitness on earlier, Melissa Schaffer, um, and, and my end question to her was what she wants people to know, and she felt like the American people are coming after them. One can presume maybe she means people who support the MAGA movement, but I guess in a time when people on both sides of the aisle are calling for a cooling of temperatures, what is your read about how things could go from here? They can go one of two directions. There could be calls for everyone to not only not repeat some of the harshest rhetoric already used in this campaign, but to vow not to use it in the future to not describe someone who differs with you politically as someone who is evil or an enemy or someone bent on destroying the future of our country. There may be calls for that. That begins at the top of every campaign. So what former President Trump says in these moments coming forward will matter a great deal. The signals he sends to his supporters, what Republicans in Congress say, what Democrats say, or there could be an even more intense hardening, a blaming, because so one side or another will say, no, your rhetoric started. No, no, your rhetoric took mm. it to the next level. No, no, no. The thing you said moved it up to the next level. There could be a very mm. wild and intense blame game over this, creating an even hotter and more pressure-filled environment. Political leaders for the last five or six years have been toying with rhetoric, acting as if it's just words. This is possibly a moment in our history where that sentiment, oh, it's just words, it's just hot rhetoric, it's just the environment, the stakes are really high, so we need to be bold in our language. Maybe that will get a reassessment. Maybe not. That's up to the political leaders, the political actors on the arena stage, and we'll be watching that stage metaphorically and literally here in Milwaukee more intensely than we imagined just 24 hours ago. Major Garrett, lucky to have you. Thank you.